Welcome to the Status Report Highlight for the 11th of October, 2016. So, an update from Brian, Peter and Victor in regards to user actions and animations, the new launcher, and of course the current status going towards 0.61 as well as blockers are in this week's Status Report. This week Hicks starts off by saying, I know a good deal of you are reading this, hoping to see somewhere in big bold letters that 0.61 is hitting experimental or unstable branch right now. Well, let me derail that train right away. We're not quite there yet. Fortunately, in this status report, Hicks will do his best to fill us in on what the dang holdup is and the team's progress against getting it onto experimental branch since the last status report. In addition, Peter will be talking briefly about our designs for the Daisy launcher, and Victor will be talking about some of the animation team's work towards the implementation of the new animation system. As well, the Trello should have some new renders of the CR550 and its magazines, as well as an updated image of the current look of the server browser. You can see those on screen right now. And with that being said, the team have had almost daily all-hands multiplayer tests in an effort to isolate the remaining blockers, stopping us getting our hands on 6.1 Experimental. So let's take a look at the progress on blockers so far for 6.1 Experimental Branch. Experimental Branch. Branch. Player sound effects significantly quieter than others. Fix for this is in testing now. Network. Players can become severely out of sync with each other. Gameplay programming team working on a fix for this currently. Client crash when exiting title. Player position hitching when navigating collision. Magazine ammo count quantity reporting incorrectly. Items can be stuck in hands under certain cancel action situations. Dynamic infected spawning without a player trigger. Some infected not responding to triggers fix in test currently. And just quickly before we give a reminder of the 6-1 milestone goals, we'd like everybody to visit and participate in the official forums. Hicks is trying his best to jump into as many discussions as possible, so hop on there if you have some time. And if you're the stalker kind that wants to find Hicks, you can find him at forums.daisy.com. Now let's remind us of the 6-1 milestone goals. Server login queue. Merge of new audio technology from Arma 3 Eden update. Update of weapon sounds for new audio technology. Dynamic spawning of infected. Wolves, dynamic shadows, network synchronization improvements, and new server browser. Now let's see what lead designer Peter has for us this week. In the upcoming 6.1 version of Daisy, you will be able to try out a brand new server browser, which doesn't bog FPS down like the old one, and it's a breeze to use with all these filter options. Mind that per character filter won't be part of 6.1 release, as it's not yet fully implemented. Alongside the new server browser Peter hinted at at the external launcher a few status reports ago, so why not uncover a bit of information about it now? The most important function of a launcher is obviously to run modded Daisy. Without mods, there would be hardly any launcher at all. Actually, it's possible to have mod support even without the launcher, but that would lead to unpleasant yet necessary restarts of the game, as different add-ons should be loaded at start. Unless you are launching them from command line, however, both cases are very user-friendly. In the launcher, you can easily manage installed mods and overview their current state, and additional information like description, author, source, and others. Apart from the game section of the mod selection, there are also two other separate sections dedicated for tools and servers, with central economy including their starter parameters and launch buttons for additional value, which offers easy discovery of options for DayZ as a platform to users that aren't aware of them. Last but not least, the launcher will also serve as an official DayZ communication channel, aggregating news, status reports, change logs of releases, QA videos, work in progress showcase and hands-on videos, maintenance and community spotlight. The launcher is currently being implemented with all requirements mentioned above, with the aim to be well arranged and simple to use. While it might not see daylight publicly in point six one, it will be released once Daisy is ready to be open for modding community. And a lovely bit of information that was from Peter, let's find out what lead animator Victor has to say this week. As I have mentioned in last status report, the animation team is busy with many tasks related to player character. We are doing polishing pass for unarmed and rifle locomotions. That includes work on animations and graph as well. The animations are being adjusted so they blend nicely and feel more natural, which has to be on par with the player graph, where blend times between animations need to feel right and fluent. There is also ongoing work on user actions, since these are already in the player graph. Now we need to connect them with the designer's scripts, so the animations are played when some actions happen. This is a big task as it includes drinking, eating, all the medical actions, as well as any item usage and even gestures. We have some progress regarding the combat as well. We do have a few prototypes now like combat stances for unarmed, one-handed item and two-handed item, and some simple attack animations. This week we will have a meeting and more discussions about the combat itself and the animation style. 
And that's all for this week's Status Report highlight for the 11th of October 2016. As always, I recommend you read the Status Reports in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. All links will be in the description below. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you peeps next time.